How did the uh, microchip situation come into play? Uh, if you, I don't know if you noticed now, but now we're reaching the age of a cashless society. We have now cryptocurrencies. Right. We have cryptocurrencies, and a lot of our payments are done digitally through our iPhones and through the tapping of our cards. Um, a lot of everything is just digital, a lot of our transactions. And I believe that the crash of Silicon Valley, along with the covered up crash of Wells Fargo recently, where they were just saying, oh, it's just a glitch error for deposited checks. Did not wanting to admit that the Federal Reserve took back the money that they gave them, same way they did to Silicon Valley, because they need it for what is going to be potentially a quote unquote war or to fight this alleged alien invasion, which I believe is just a complete hoax. Uh, they're staging this to make a one world government to have the other people say, hey, look, you know what, let's not fight each other. We see all this stuff that's going on with this UFOs. Perhaps there is a bigger threat. Why don't we team up then? And if we do that, they're going to create a one world currency. Now, they're not going to be doing that by something that can be printed and highly fluctuated. They're going to do a digital currency, I believe. Every, a lot of the things that I had done back then, again, like with the cloning thing, was all to raise awareness of something that I believe that is coming. And I was always talking about 2023. There's going to be a lot revealed to people, and they're going to circle back and say, hey, remember that guy, Kid Boo? And that's what I get now. A lot of those people who used to talk shit are now scared. They're circling back to my DMs. They're emailing me. They're finding out my phone number, calling me, asking just to know more information. They're like, you know, I thought this stuff was crazy, but then I seen this and now I'm seeing this on the internet. You know, they're like, uh, can you tell me more? And a lot of things that I did speak about in previous interviews, inclu including like with this microchip thing, mark my words, we're gonna enter a cashless society and they're gonna have us microchipped. It's gonna. It started with our phones and everything like that already. But if you notice, a lot of uh, produce is going up in prices. Eggs and then f meat has been very scarce. There's been suspicious fires burning down our uh, where our cattle get slaughtered, the slaughterhouses and all this stuff. Right? Just coincidentally, again, when there goes that word, right? Coincidentally, now who comes to save the day? Ba -ba -ba -ba, Jeff Bezos, the man who has the most collected cons human consumption data on America, now is going to have these AI slaughterhouses that he's investing in that's going to produce everything. So they're going to be producing our meat in these factories that are run by artificial intelligence, AI, where my microchip was. They will then, after having this whole control, will start selling us in digital supermarkets. I spoke about this. Amazon now opened up, and that interview was deleted from Big Boy's Neighborhood uh, five minutes after it was uploaded, but I did speak about this. And I said, they're going to have us in these digital supermarkets where we don't even need to hit the cashier because the cameras are on the carts and all over the place are going to know what products we put in. We're going to be able to cash out from there. And if you look now, you have Amazon supermarkets. Right. Amazon has the that. Am yep. Yes. The second you put a, an item into your cart, it scans it, knows it's in there. Now I get the cameras being internally in the cart to show that, but why on the outside, right? It's because they're doing a mapping system. A mapping system that is done the same way Google cars are done. If you notice anyone watching, if you've ever been outside and seen those Google cars with the cameras all over them, the 360 ones, they're filming, creating um, the Google Maps so that way it can be uploaded into the metaverse and we can use the maps to get around. They also have been doing this in the supermarkets and on the streets with the 5G towers that have been described uh, disguised to look like trees. I don't know if you guys seen those. It's like a, a fake pine tree or fake palm tree. Those are 5G towers that act as router extenders. Now, here's a 360 camera I have here. Um, I wanted to understand this technology, so I bought a 360 camera. I learned how to inject metadata, and I was able to make the first um, rap 3d music video right where you could put on the metaverse glasses and you're fully immersed into my music video what they are going to do is a similar technology i don't know if you noticed but facebook i mean clearly notice has turned into meta then the oculus sudden the oculus that was came out four years ago suddenly now is more desirable than the ps5 for a lot of people uh, like if it's something new this isn't new this is old their reason for this is to introduce us to Meta, also to say, hey, you can pay for a verification 
and we're going to verify your Instagram. They're giving us everything that we want to tune in to this metaverse. They want us in the metaverse. So by to fast forward, where I'm getting at is the, the cars that are driving around, not all of them are Google. The shopping carts that are now what the exist Amazon supermarkets, like I spoke about a few years ago on the Big Boy Club, now exist. They now exist today. People now have seen the power of AI. This is another thing I talked about in many other interviews. Artificial intelligence will take over. We will reach a time where we live in paradism, where we free mankind and give jobs to robotics. The beginning will seem scary because a lot of you will lose jobs. We will become a cashless society. And the, the, the idea of a one world government does sound scary, but what sounds scarier to me is a divided world, divided government, because this means a continuous war. And nuclear warfare is only going to develop more and more and the decades go on. It's going to get to the point where we'll blow each other up. Why not unite and become one, one world government where we're not fighting one another here? Why not create a one world currency, right? Why not make it digitized? Why not just eliminate it altogether and give the jobs to AIs to do everything? Elon Musk said that we'll be like house cats. If you ask me, a house cat has a good. You got to clean that box of shit every other day. You got to feed it. You treat it with love and care. And the cats have it. At like They're like treated like gods. They're pampered. So if you're telling me that essentially an AI is going to take over and treat me like a god, give me a house to live in, clean up my toilet, feed me, do all of that stuff. And I just got to sit home and just do whatever the fuck I please. If I want to sit by the window and sun gaze and meditate, if I want to just like take a bath all day, if I want to sleep all day, I can, then by all means, I invite it. I embrace it. And that was the whole thing behind the microchipping was showing. And I was all for that as a company, uh, paradism.org. You guys can look into that. They're all for that. I was getting behind that. I wanted to raise awareness to it. Same way about cloning. I wanted to raise awareness to the microchipping, to AI technology, to robotics becoming a thing where we step outside and now it's a common thing to see robots. If you see them outside, I was already right. Elon Musk says, if you see them outside, we already lost. I don't think it's a lose situation. I think it's a winning situation. The only way AI will think to destroy humankind is if humankind continues to pose as a threat to the planet. If we can all just say, hey, let's become humanitarians, stop trying to destroy each other and destroy the planet, then we pose as a zero threat, just like a fucking cat would that's declawed. We are a zero threat. We are just fat, furry, little, cute, cuddly things. It's not going to kill us and do anything to us. They will then let us live. If we try to uprise against it and keep control, then I see the whole Terminator factor coming into play. Definitely. Do I think that that's what's going to happen as opposed to the other, the, the, the fat cat situation that I wish? Yes. In a perfect world, I wish we can argue that our governments and our world leaders could just say, all right, fine, let's create this AI, let them take care of everything, and let's sit back and not pose any threats, destroy all weapons. I'm just fine. But that's not going to happen. I feel like humans are too much of the whole, like, they're fearful control addicts. They're going to be like, nope, uh, we got to kill this off. You know, we got to kill it. We got to kill it. Like, nope. It's contradicting. It's so contradicting and it frustrates me. It really does. But what are we going to do?